Hello, and welcome to Complete Chiropractic Healthcare on the website of Dr. Greg Arnold, www.pitchingdoc.com. Today we're going to be discussing my February 6th, 2015 newsletter, Three Pitching Mechanics Myths Revisited. And in the part one of this three-part series, we're going to be discussing the myth of the balance point. Uh, right below the date, you can see this PDF link, and if you click on that link, it will pull up um, uh, a PDF, which sometimes can be uh, easier to read uh, than the actual website page. So, uh, it's very important to understand that this is a concept that I taught for years to my pitching students, to have a balance point. It was something that I was taught throughout my pitching career, and as a result, I taught it uh, to the kids that I worked with, but... In actuality, it's actually incorrect to be teaching kids to have a balance point. And this stems uh, from a 2004 study that compared pitchers who used a balance point and those who did not. And this was in the Journal of the National Strength and Conditioning uh, Research. So what they found was that pitchers who used a balance point had more head movement, and as a result, they had lower velocity and decreased accuracy compared to pitchers who did not have a balance point. And uh, this led the researchers to conclude that we cannot recommend uh, using the balance point uh, to young pitchers to reduce uh, pitching error. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at a video that will help better explain this. So if we look at the pitcher on the left, we'll go through twice in real time. Uh, this is a pitcher who has a balance point. You can see he lifts his leg straight up um, and doesn't really move to the plate until after the leg kick is finished. And if we look at the pitcher on the right who does not have a balance point, we'll see that as he is lifting his leg, he's actually moving right to the plate. And we're going to see, the biggest thing we're going to look at today is, uh, is head movement. So if we go back to the picture on the left, the biggest thing we're going to see is what happens uh, after the leg kick. So he's at a starting position, lifts his leg, and he's still not moving forward at all. And as a result, if we look at his back left, his back leg, we'll see that his leg is straight. And as he goes to move, we're going to see that leg is going to bend to his natural athletic posture. Okay, his body doesn't want to be up here. His body wants to be down here right now. So this is where he needs to be starting. And you can see the difference from his starting position to where his body wants to be. And the National Pitching Association says that for every inch that the head drops during the delivery, this pushes the pitcher two inches further away uh, from home plate, which creates uh, a deceptive disadvantage for the pitcher uh, against the hitter. If we look at the pitcher on the right, who's starting in a more athletic posture and is moving to the plate right as he lifts his leg, we can see there's much less head movement and head drop. So he's going to be closer to the plate when he throws the ball. And then we'll go ahead and look at the finishing position uh, for the pitcher. So the pitcher on the right has much less head movement overall compared to the pitcher uh, on the left. And what we're also looking for is quickness uh, to foot strike. Because of the balance point position, the pitcher on the left doesn't get to foot strike until 2.035 seconds after movement's initiated. The pitcher on the right, because there is no balance point, he's much quicker to foot strike and landing in 0 0.935 seconds. And the National Pitching Association recommends getting to foot strike between 0 0.95 and 1.05 seconds. So the pitcher on the left is slower to the plate, creating less momentum and having worse timing compared to the pitcher on the right, who is getting his momentum forward using his hips, having better timing, more momentum, higher velocity. So, to summarize, having a balance point in the leg kick creates three problems. One is it creates an unathletic posture in the pitcher. It decreases quickness to the plate, which is therefore going to decrease momentum, decrease momentum, means slower velocity. And a phrase that we I come and use with my pitchers uh, is, an, is an old John Wooden saying, be quick, but don't hurry. And finally, having a slower delivery tempo uh, creates poor timing. Poor timing means decreased accuracy. So I hope you found this uh, newsletter valuable. Next month we're going to be doing uh, the myth of tucking the glove and how tucking the glove is an incorrect pitching concept. So if you have a question about this newsletter, please feel free to contact me by phone. You can send me an email or you can visit my website at www.pitchingdoc.com. Thank you.